Sonic Frontiers is so great and the music slaps. Sonic the Hedgehog is my favorite video game character of all time. I am thankful that I'm here today to review Sonic Frontiers. I've been a hardcore Sonic fan since the early 90s. Pretty much since I came out the womb. Now when I say Sonic Frontiers might be in top 10, heck even top 5 modern or 3D Sonic games period, I'm going to explain why in this review. But before we get into this review, make sure you hit the subscribe on this channel. I cover fighting games here, JRPGs, and anime games. But if you want to see raw reactions to boss fights, guides below, subscribe to my second channel for more content only on the Sonic channel. It's just a Sonic only channel. Enough of all of that, let's get right into it. Is Sonic Frontiers fun? The game itself is possibly one of the most fun Sonic games Sega has created since potentially since Sonic Generations or in the last decade for modern 3D Sonic games. I won't be spoiling the story in Sonic Frontiers or in this video, but I will say if you're a fan of the darker, more serious Sonic stories, or if you're a fan of Sonic Adventure 1 and Sonic Adventure 2, or even Unleashed even, you will 100% enjoy this game. The game takes anywhere from 15 to 19 hours to complete, and I haven't felt like anything has been repetitive or dull ever since I started the game. But depending on how you play the game, you might get trapped in exploration and it may even add up more hours to your playthrough. I know I love fishing in JRPGs, so I spent like 10 hours doing this. <laughs> if your game don't got fishing, delay that hoe. Stop playing. I surely feel like this game came out of the adventure era of Sonic, but with modern game structures in a lot of areas, and it just feels fresh for once. If anything, I am very hard on Sonic and came in very hyped but with low expectation and this game impressed the hell out of me. The gameplay loop and exploration. Essentially without story spoilers, Sonic is put on this gigantic open map environment, which are called islands. In the environment, Sonic can do a whole bunch of various mini games and Travis do different areas throughout them. I think what makes this so good for Sonic is that it lets players explore the world of Sonic at Sonic speed. If I had to compare the size of the islands to another game off the top of my head or huge maps, I think of Mario Odyssey different worlds, but I think maybe a little bigger than each world compared to Odyssey, but don't hold me to that so far. I think this also helps with modern game development for Sonic. Like, have you ever thought about how they make these super cool design stages, levels, and Sonic games, but we get past them in like two minutes? Yeah, they could make them longer, but this game has a very airy and chill atmospheric vibe to it, and the islands, I think this is the future of Sonic, and if this is the direction we're going, keep going. It is so good so far. Now, I'm not defending past Sonic games or saying excuses for level, quality of forces, and other previous games where stages felt very lackluster, but I think this concept for Sonic just slaps all together. Oh yeah, Sonic does go really fast in this game. If you want to go fast, you can go fast. If you really want to go super fast mode crackhead energy, this game catches the Sonic Unleashed level of hype adrenaline that that game had back in 2008 maybe even crazier. Also, in this game, you could, could you could literally make how fast Sonic moves, control how he turns and everything. Customization and accessibility is key in Sonic Frontiers. I know this has been talked about from other resources and outlets. This is pretty dope to see that it gives even the general consumer the ability to change how Sonic plays. I highly recommend getting this game on PS5 and PC because it has 60 FPS, makes the game even more smooth. However, I'm playing on both PS4 and PS5 and the 30 FPS of the game didn't really matter because Sonic still go fast in both versions of the game for me. But the PS4 version, I know the disc, it says it comes with a digital upgrade, but it's not out because the game ain't out until today. So there's that. This game is still fast as hell. <laughs> Combat. All right, this is where the YouTuber will make that video and say, I was wrong about Sonic Frontiers. And I'm gonna say, the combat comes in this game. This combat makes me nuts. I love the combat in Sonic Frontiers. The combat is very close to three types of action games, and one will blow you away when I say it. Hold on. It's like Bayonetta, Devil May Crash in there, and lastly, like a Naruto Storm. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Don't worry, I'll explain all three. If you want me to throw out a hot take, it's possibly way better than Unleashed combat for me than the Werehog. I think Unleashed has better combo routes for normal attacks, etc. But I think the flow of battle and combat fits strongly here better. <coughs> One day I'll talk about why I am indifferent on the Werehog and why I still like it and hate it at the same time. But hopefully, 
Sorry, Werehog. You get a second game and they'll tweak you in the future for the better to where everybody can love you. So the game has a combo system where if you mash an attack and hold a direction, you'll get a different combo ender. Similar to anime arena fighters like Naruto Storm and Demon Slayer games when I first played this. I was like, oh, I think I'm already in love with this game already. The beauty of combat in Sonic Frontiers is that they have specific attacks and special moves that can all be cancelled and some more in-depth cancel and windows for moves. What's crazy is Sonic Frontiers has a bayonetta-like trading mode or Devil May Cry mode, whichever one you want to pick and it helps you lab out these specific actions in consecutive execution, which is really good for making everybody feel like they can do anything in this open world. If I had to criticize anything, I do feel like Sonic Frontiers is kind of more of the easier of Sonic games, but at the end of the day, it does feel like they're hand holding you, but again, you know how Sega, but anyway, you know how like journalists be like, this too hard. So they, they try to make it easy for everybody to understand right now. This is a new concept for Sonic. Yeah, Sonic Frontiers has a skill tree which keeps the base combat for fairly stale or boring. Once you learn to use more moves in your arsenal, the game opens up a whole different can of sauce. Sonic Frontiers has a parry, but it's really kind of easy to use because you just hold it to parry attacks. However, it slows down like Bayonetta when you do it, and it gives you kind of like witch time, it gives you more time to build up your combo meter. In Sonic Frontiers, the side loop mechanic is used not only to progress through open worlds, find hidden objects, and do puzzles, but to fight enemies as well. With the side loop mechanic, you can circle around enemies to launch them in the air and then combo them. It's not a groundbreaking mechanic, but it adds another layer for Sonic and combat instead of just mindlessly mashing through mobs of enemies. Some of the huge enemies in the game have some of the most unique boss designs I've seen in an open game like this. And some of the enemies have unique ways of fighting them and beating them. Essentially, in this one, for example, there's one enemy where you have to literally survive on his trail or his tail rather to boost and hit them. Once you hit them, you fight in normal like combat and then you can go all crazy with the combos. Or the tank boss you are now fighting the air, but the goal is to hit him anywhere he doesn't exhaust flames and dodges other projectiles and moves. I think the combat in Sonic Frontiers is probably the coolest way they've ever done combat in the Sonic game period. Besides, the only other game I can think of combat in besides Unleashed would be Sonic Battle, but those are spinoffs and that's made to have combat. This is finally solving combat for Sonic in a cool, raw way. Now we finally gotta talk about the elevator to rule, Cyberspace. This is the part of the video where I get a lot of mixed thoughts and opinions on. Cyberspace. If you did know, Cyberspace is very similar to Breath of the Wild Shrines. However, they are just recreations or little small excerpts of Sonic levels from previous Sonic games, but very short. Usually to get an S rank, it takes around 1 minute and 20 seconds for most levels. Now I will say, Sonic doesn't feel as nearly as good to control in cyberspace compared to the open world, but I think that's their goal, they just make them just one episode of the game. I do feel like it could be a lot better in cyberspace though. I feel like Sega still hasn't peaked past Sonic Unleashed Day stages. Those are some of the coolest levels in my honest opinion besides the adventure series with the level design in those stages. I think that's the most disappointing part of Sonic Frontiers is the level design here. Every portal cyberspace stage brings cool and dope homages to older Sonic games which I love. However, premise, the stage design, the background is either Green Hill Zone, the city level I can't remember the day above, and Sky Sanctuary, which can be very boring. I think this was dope about Cyberspace that the whole design of Sonic Forces level is that usually in Sonic Forces, I would have to play them once, and in 99%, I remember on my first playthrough, I got S rank on the first trial of all stages. There's no replayability like in Forces. Here, you have a lot of replayability because you have to go through the stages multiple times if you're not good at doing it all on the first go. Each portal has different conditions that need to be met, such as getting the fastest S rank time, collecting all the rare rigs, waiting with a certain amount of rigs, and beating the level. If you collect them all, you get an extra vault key. For me, this is the most polarizing thing in Frontiers, to be honest with you. Like, as a fan, I want to say it's the worst part of the game. But for me, this is a Sonic game, so I think like it's a small minuscule on what they're trying to go for here, and it helps solve the design problem of the stages. I just hope in the future when Sonic does return to this style of gameplay, things of that nature, they be more creative with the level designs in cyberspace, because that's probably the most repetition thing or feeling very stale after you play a couple of them a couple times. But the music slaps. <laughs> oh, the RPG system in Sonic Frontiers is pretty cool. Like exploration is rewarding and also you be able to level up Sonic speed to level 99. I haven't gotten to level 99 yet, 
but just being at level six is still pretty fast for me to be honest with you. And you find these little seeds, you find these little Kokoro things, and you find them and you go to the elders and they can upgrade your speed, your defense, your attack, and all other sorts of things for your arsenal of Sonic. I think adding the RPG system into the game makes exploration more worthwhile in this open world because at one point if they didn't have this in there, the game would feel very repetitive because you'll just do like the main mission and you'll be doing the same thing over and over again. But I think here they found a perfect balance of making you care about other things that happen within Sonic Frontiers. I will go even more in depth, but I don't want to spoil anything any further. However, Sonic Frontiers is one of the best Sonic games right now. If you have any questions, please comment down below and ask your boy. Maybe it's just the honeymoon phase right now, but the gameplay, the pace, and exploration are all really good in this game. I highly recommend getting this game and don't let the press tell you otherwise. The game is actually really good. That being said, if I had to give a score, I know people probably care about that stuff, I would probably get a solid 8 out of 10, probably close to a 9 for me. I'm very happy and satisfied with this Sonic game. You don't know how happy I am that Sonic is back. I like what Sam Procrastinate said, if you guys know who that is. It's the Bad Day era, but let's call this the Redemption Arc. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's your boy Avatar Yaya. Follow me on Twitter at Avatar Yaya underscore for all more Sonic Frontiers updates, gaming, fighting game, and random stuff I talk about. And go subscribe to the second channel for more Sonic Frontiers coverage from your boy, Truly. I will be putting up some guys, some reactions to some boss fights, and bam, that's literally what I'm going to do on that channel. <laughs> so, yeah, see you guys later. It's Avatar Yaya. I'm out in peace. Next yeah, strategy. yeah, when it comes to the bars, when I got it, y'all niggas got the views, I bought it, I'm a cop in this bitch, you should watch it, cause these songs hit you quick like they sign it, got my stride now, your niggas in trouble, drunk the ball, man, I call that a fumble, while we boxing, I'm ready to rumble, I love throwing these hands like I'm nothing, beat it.